A man goes to his doctor complaining about migraines. His doctor tells him, I also suffer from the same ailment. Every time I get one, I give my wife oral... When she has an... She tightens her legs around my head, which gets rid of the pain. You should try it sometime. Two weeks later on a return visit, the patient tells his doctor, Your suggestion worked, and I'd like to tell you that you have a very nice house. A wife and husband are having money issues. One day they decide to have the wife work the corner. Later that night, the husband goes to pick the wife up. He asks, How much did you make, sweetie? She answers, I made 250. The husband says, What a sh give you 50 cents. She replies, All of them. Seven wise men with knowledge so fine created a their design. First was a butcher, with smart wit, using a knife. He gave it a slit. Second was a carpenter, strong and bold. With a hammer and chisel, he gave it a hole. Third was a tailor, tall and thin. By using red velvet, he lined it within. Fourth was a hunter, short and stout. With a piece of fox fur, he lined it without. Fifth was a fisherman, nasty as hell. Threw in a fish and gave it a smell. Sixth was a preacher, whose name was McGee. He touched it and blessed it, and said it could pee. Last was a sailor, dirty little runt. He sucked it and f and called it a A French woman, F, was told that a man's p is proportional to the size of his shoes, and she decides to check this by coming to Armenia. She walks along Main Street and sees a huge country man, M, with size 46 shoes. She approaches him, F. Listen, sleep with me and I'll pay you generously. M. I can't, I have a wife and kids. F. I'll give you money for them. M. I have work. F. I'll pay you for the missed day. M. Well, okay. They go to a hotel, sleep together, and in the morning the man finds a note. Here's a hundred dollars for your wife and kids. Here's fifty dollars for the missed day and another $150 for you to buy yourself new shoes. These seem a bit small for you. Two friends meet, and one says, Listen, you're always so successful with women, like a real playboy. I need your advice. My wife complains that she doesn't get any satisfaction in bed. What should I do? All right, I'll help. So in the evening, take her to a restaurant with caviar, delicacies and good wine. Let her relax properly. And then? Then take her to a nice cabaret with naked girls and eyes. Let her get really aroused. And then? Then take her to a room in a nice hotel, a new romantic atmosphere. Let her get in the mood. And then? Then call me and I'll come quickly. A man and a woman were traveling in a train compartment. The man suggested, Let's play chess. Oh, I don't know how to play, the woman replied. Let's play wow instead. What's that? It's simple. You turn away while I undress, and when I say so, you look. Then we switch. The man happily agreed and turned away. The woman undressed down to her underwear and said, Ready! The man turned around and said, Wow! Now the woman turned away, and the man undressed down to his underwear and said, Ready! Wow! the woman exclaimed. Now turn away again, the man said, removing the rest of his clothes. Ready! Wow! Now it's your turn to look away, the woman said. The man turned away, eagerly waiting. He waited and waited, but it was silent. He turned around to find nobody there and all his clothes were gone. He sat by the window, wondering what to do. Suddenly he saw the train stopping, and a delegation in traditional Indian costumes getting off a neighboring car. Without thinking, he wrapped himself in sheets and joined them. The last Indian in line looked back and then nudged the one in front of him. Look, another one who played wow. A man goes to a birth, asks the madam, I want a tall blonde, and she must be silent. Please, room 16, the woman is waiting for you, the madam says. 
The man enters, and there's a tall blonde lying on the bed, silent. He undresses and has her. She's silent, but she seems to have a cold because her nose is running. The man wipes her nose and has her again. She's still silent, but her nose is running again. The man gets dressed, leaves, and pays. Was everything good? Are you satisfied? The madam asks. Everything was great, the man says, but the woman has a cold and her nose is running. I apologize for this minor inconvenience. Please come back again, the madam says. After the client leaves, she yanks the phone off the hook. Slackers, change the mannequin in room 16. It's full. A girl goes into the doctor's office for a checkup. As she takes off her blouse, the doctor notices a red H on her chest. How did you get that mark on your chest? asks the doctor. Oh, my boyfriend went to Harvard, and he's so proud of it, he never takes off his Harvard sweet shirt, even when we make love, she replies. A couple of days later, another girl comes in for a checkup. As she takes off her blouse, he notices a blue Y on her chest. How did you get that mark on your chest? asks the doctor. Oh, my boyfriend went to Yale, and he's so proud of it that he never takes off his Yale sweatshirt, even when we make love, she replies. A couple of days later, another girl comes in for a checkup. As she takes off her blouse, he notices a green M on her chest. Do you have a boyfriend at Michigan? asks the doctor. No, but I have a girlfriend at Wisconsin. Why do you ask? A woman walks into her accountant's office and tells him that she needs to file her taxes. The accountant says, Before we begin, I'll need to ask a few questions. He gets her name, address, social security number, etc., and then asks, What is your occupation? The woman replies, I'm a... The accountant hesitates and says, No, no, no. That will never work. That is much too crass. Let's try to rephrase that. The woman says, Okay, I'm a... No, that is still too crude. Try again. They both think for a moment. Then the woman states, I'm a chicken farmer. The accountant asks, What does chicken farming have to do with being a... Or a... Well, I raised over 5,000... Last year. Two friends die. One goes to heaven, and the other goes to hell. The one that goes to heaven begs the angel to let him visit his friend in hell, and the angel agrees. He gets to hell and sees his friend surrounded by beautiful women and alcohol everywhere. He says to his friend, Wow, you were a son of a and we were alive. Hell looks better than heaven. So the friend in hell says, Pour yourself a glass of wine. The heavenly friend pours the wine and notices that the glass has no bottom. The good friend looks at the bad one in confusion, and the bad friend says, The glass has no bottom, and neither do the girls. Welcome to hell. A lonely woman calls an escort service. Do you have muscular men? Of course. Muscular and good-looking? All of them. Muscular, good-looking, and stylish? Yes. Among those muscular, good-looking, and stylish men, are there any who take a long time to finish? Yes. Are there any who take a really, really, really long time to finish? There's one. Do you want him? Yes. Send him. Half an hour later, there's a knock on the door. She opens it to find a muscular, handsome young man, dressed in Cavalli and Gucci, even wearing Brioni socks, etc. They go to the bedroom and she lies down on the bed. Meanwhile, he starts tearing his clothes off, ruining his suit and ripping his shirt to shreds. She asks, What are you doing? Why are you tearing your clothes? Because when I finish, they'll be out of fashion. A blonde, a redhead, and a brunette are riding in an elevator when they see a small puddle in the corner. The brunette looks at it and says, that's definitely warm. The redhead touches it and says, 
That's definitely warm. The blonde takes a little taste and says, That's definitely warm, but nobody in our building. It was the mailman's last day on the job after 35 years of carrying the mail through all kinds of weather to the same neighborhood. When he arrived at the first house on his route, he was greeted by the whole family there who congratulated him and sent him on his way with a big gift certificate envelope. At the second house, they presented him with a box of fine imported cigars. The folks at the third house handed him a selection of terrific fishing lures. At each of the houses along his route, he was met with congratulations, farewells, cards, and gifts of all types and values. At the final house, he was met at the door by a strikingly beautiful young blonde in a revealing negligee. She took him by the hand, gently led him through the door, which she closed behind him, and led him up the stairs to the bedroom where they had a most passionate liaison. Afterwards, they went downstairs, where she fixed him a giant breakfast, eggs, potatoes, ham, sausage, blueberry waffles, and fresh-squeezed orange juice. When he was truly satisfied, she poured him a cup of steaming coffee. As she was pouring, he noticed a dollar bill sticking out from under the cup's bottom edge. All this was just too wonderful for words, he said. But what's the dollar for? Well, she said, Last night, I told my husband that today would be your last day and that we should do something special for you. I asked him what to give you. He said, the, show him, give him a dollar. The blonde then blushed and said, But the breakfast was my idea. <laughs> little Johnny was at school one day when he noticed a large crowd of kids gathered around Little Billy. Little Johnny walks up to Little Billy and asks, Hey, what's all the excitement about? Little Billy replies, Just showing everyone my new watch. Little Johnny says, Wow, that's a cool watch. Where did you get it? Little Billy explains, Well, I walked in on my mom and dad making love over the weekend, and my dad was so mad he gave me a spanking and sent me to my room. The next day he felt guilty about what he had done and bought me this cool watch. This gives Little Johnny an idea. Later that night, when Little Johnny was sent to bed, he stayed up listening and waiting for his mom and dad to go to bed. Once he starts hearing noises coming from their room, he runs down the hall, throws their bedroom door open, and yells, I want to watch! His dad looks over to Johnny and says, Well, okay, but sit in the corner and be quiet. A married woman walks up to Santa Claus and tells him that all she wants for Christmas is for her husband to be interested in intimacy. Santa then proceeds to give her a bottle of pills. He tells her to give them a try and then let him know how it's working. So she takes the pills home and puts one pill in her husband's Christmas dinner. That night they make love for one hour. The next day, she's running around thrilled and happy. Oh my goodness, I can't believe how well that worked, she thinks to herself. That night she puts two pills in his food and they make love for two hours. The next day, she's even more thrilled so she dumps all the pills in his food. Two weeks go by without any word from this woman, so Santa decides to give her a call. A little boy answers the phone. Santa says, Little boy, is your mother home? No, she's... Who's this? The little boy asks. I'm a friend of your mother's, and I gave her some pills to help her out a couple of weeks ago. Maybe you know how it's going. That was you, the little boy says. Let me tell you, mom's dead, sister's pregnant, my b****s, and dad's in the attic going, Here, kitty, kitty, kitty. <laughs> I remember a few years ago when my little girl was only eight years old. She came up to me and asked, Daddy, what is it? I was somewhat surprised that she would ask such a question, but I figured if she's old enough to ask the question, then surely she's old enough for a straight answer. So I proceeded to tell her all about the birds and the bees. 
After the explanation, my daughter was a little pale and wide-eyed in disbelief. By the way, dear, why do you ask? I then asked her. She then replied, Mommy told me to tell you that dinner would be ready in just a couple of secs. Sean Connery was interviewed by Mikhail Parkinson and bragged that despite his 72 years of age, he could still have three times a night. Kylie Minogue, who was also a guest, looked intrigued. After the show, Kyle said, Sean, if I am not being too forward, I'd love to have an older man. Let's go back to my place. So they go back to her place and have great Afterwards, Sean says, If you think that was good, let me sleep for half an hour and we can have even better But while I'm sleeping, hold my left hand and my in your right hand. Kylie looks a bit perplexed but says, Okay, he sleeps for half an hour, awakens, and they have even better Then Sean says, Kylie, that was wonderful. But if you let me sleep for an hour, we can have the best yet. But again, Hold my left hand and my in your right hand. Kylie is now used to the routine and complies. The results are mind-blowing. Once it's all over and the cigarettes are lit, Kylie asks, Sean, tell me, does my holding your in my left hand and your in my right stimulate you while you're sleeping? Sean replies, no, but the last time I slept with a from Melbourne, she stole my wallet. A first-year student with braids comes out of the institute. Suddenly, a car breaks near her. Two guys jump out of it, grab the girl, and drive off. There are three more guys in the car. One of them says, We give you two options. Either we go where your dad hid his valuables, or we go straight and at every traffic light. Each of us will have x with you until we run out of gas. So, where are we going? To the gas station, boys. There were three men discussing how to make their wives to tell them if they cheated on them. The first guy says, I go home after work at night, lie on the couch, turn on the television and ask, Woman, you cheated on me today. Who? Me, my husband. Could I ever do such a thing? Pissed off as I am, I get up, put her down, punch her, and in the end she can't take it anymore and admits... I cheated on you with Nick. The second guy says, I do exactly the same thing. I punch her and finally she says, I cheated on you with Jake. The third guy says, I have no problem at all. I go home, undress, put the sweatpants on, light my cigarette on. I go out to the balcony, see the neighbor spreading clothes and shout at her, Mary, you are a... And then she starts saying, I'm a or your wife who sleeps with John, Mark, Peter. Cop on horse says to little girl on bike, did Santa get you that? Yes, replies the little girl. Well, tell him to put a reflector light on it next year. And finds her five dollars. The little girl looks up at the cop and says, nice horse you've got there. Did Santa bring you that? The cop chuckles and replies, he sure did. Well, says the little girl, next year tell Santa that the dick under the horse, not on top of it. A shepherd goes to a television program. A man of the viewers stand up and asks him, what was the best day of your life? The shepherd answers, well, the best day of my life was when I lost my donkey in Kukuredu's mountain. When I found it, I took it to the village's square and everyone fu- A second man of the viewers asks him, And the second best day of your life? And the shepherd, Well, the second one was when I lost a sheep in Kukuredu's mountain. When I found it, I took it to the village's square and everyone fu So after that, a third man of the viewers stand up and asks, And the worst day of your life? The worst day of my life was when I got lost in Kukureta's mountain. One day a man goes to the beach to get a tan. He is wearing no clothes except for a newspaper to cover his privates. A little girl walk up to him and asks, What is under the newspaper? The man replies, Oh, that's my bird. 
don't touch it. Soon after, he falls asleep. When he woke up, he realized he was in a hospital, and he felt a tense pain in his private area. He sees the little girl sitting beside his bed. What happened, Ed? The man asks. Oh, ooh, yeah. When you fell asleep, I went and played with your bird, but then it spat on me, so I broke its neck, smashed its eggs, and burned its nest. A correspondent asks the director of a mental institution what test is used as a criterion for discharge. The director explains, We fill a bathtub with water, place a teaspoon and a large mug next to it, and ask the patient to empty the tub. The correspondent smiles and says, Any sane person would choose the mug. The director replies, No, a normal person would pull the plug. A girl was a but she did not want her grandma to know. One day the police raided a whole group of at a party in a hotel, and she was among them. The police took them outside and had all the line up along the driveway. Suddenly the girl's grandma came by and saw her. Why are you standing in line, dear? she asked. Not willing to let her grandma know the truth, the girl told her that the policemen were passing out free oranges. Why, that is awfully nice of them. I think I'll get some for myself, said the grandma. A policeman went down the line, asking for information from all of the pro- When he got to grandma, he exclaimed, Wow, still going at it at your age? How do you do it? Grandma replied, Oh, it's easy, dear. I just take out my dentures and suck them dry. A p toot gets married and her wedding night is approaching. She's worried because her body is a bit worn out. She decides to consult a psychologist. The psychologist asks, What's your problem? I'm afraid that after the wedding night, my husband will leave me because I'm not a virgin, not even close. Well, here's my advice. On your wedding night, pretend to be inexperienced. Scream as if in pain. Give the impression that it's your first time. Thanks for the advice. I'll do just that. The wedding night comes. Everything goes according to plan. The prostitute screams loudly. So does her husband. Everything ends. The husband asks, Darling, why were you screaming? Well, it's pretty painful the first time. Why were you screaming? You see, I was scared when my b**** fell in. There was this old woman who heard a song called Two Lips and Seven Kisses. She called up information after hearing the song on the radio to get the name of the record company. In dialing, she erroneously called up a gas station, and she asks, Do you have two lips and seven kisses? The gas station attendant who answered the phone said, no, but I have two nuts and seven inches. So the woman asked, Is this a record? To which the man replied, No, it's average. A tough-looking group of hairy bikers are riding when they see a girl about to jump off a bridge, so they stop. The leader, a big burly man, gets off his bike and says, What are you doing? I'm going to commit suicide, she says. While he doesn't want to appear insensitive, he also doesn't want to miss an opportunity. So he asks, Well, before you jump, why don't you give me a kiss? She does, and it is a long, deep, lingering kiss. After she's finished, the tough, hairy biker says, Wow, that was the best kiss I've ever had. That's a real talent you're wasting. You could be famous. Why are you committing suicide? My parents don't like me dressing up like a girl. Little Johnny noticed that his older brother shaved every evening and went somewhere in his car. This intrigued Johnny, wondering where his brother was going. He hid under the back seat of the car and went with him. They arrived in the city center. The brother picked up a girl and took her to the forest. In the forest, he asked, Will you sleep with me? No, I won't. Then get out and walk home. The girl got out, and she went home. The next day, Johnny shaved, 
got on his bike, went to the center. He picked up a girl, put her on his bike frame, and took her to the park. In the park, he asked, Will you sleep with me? Yes, I will. Johnny thought for a moment and said, Then get on the bike and ride home, and I'll walk. A guy went to a casino and lost all $10,000. Swearing for the situation, he goes to a taxi driver and asks, I have lost all my money. Please give me a ride back home for free. F f no money, no ride. The next day, the guys come to casino again, and this time he successfully won all the money back and $10,000 extra. High goes out of the casino happily and sees five taxis, and the last car is the one, which refused to give a ride for free yesterday. He goes to the first taxi and says, Will you take me home for a hundred dollars? Sure. But when you take me there, you'll have to do the as well. F man. The guys goes to all next three cars and the story repeats. Finally, he goes to the last taxi driver, who refused to help a day ago, and says, Will you take me home for a hundred dollars? Sure. Deal. But you have to pass through those other four taxi drivers very, very slowly. During lunch at work last week, I ate three plates of beans, which I know I shouldn't. When I got home, my husband seemed excited to see me and exclaimed delightedly, Darling, I have a surprise for dinner tonight. He then blindfolded me and led me to my chair at the dinner table. I took a seat, and just as he was about to remove my blindfold, the telephone rang. He made me promise not to touch the blindfold until he returned and went to answer the call. The beans I had consumed were still affecting me, and the pressure was becoming unbearable. So while my husband was out of the room, I seized the opportunity, shifted my weight to one leg and let one go. It was not only loud, but it smelled like a fertilizer truck running over a skunk in front of a garbage dump. I took my napkin from my lap and fanned the air around me vigorously. Then, shifting to the other leg, I ripped off three more. The stink was worse than cooked cabbage. Keeping my ears carefully tuned to the conversation in the other room, I went on releasing atomic bombs like this for another few minutes. The pleasure was indescribable. Eventually, the telephone farewell signaled the end of my freedom, so I quickly fanned the air a few more times with my napkin, placed it on my lap, and folded my hands back on it, feeling very relieved and pleased with myself. My face must have been the picture of innocence when my husband returned, apologizing for taking so long. He asked me if I had peeked through the blindfold, and I assured him I had not. At this point, he removed the blindfold, and twelve dinner guests seated around the table, with their hands to their noses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A guy decides to do something nice for his girlfriend before they leave on vacation, so he gets her name tattooed on his p He comes home and shows it to her. She looks at it and says, That's great, sweetie, but what is why? He tells her to rub it, and as she does, she sees it actually reads Wendy. When they arrive at Montego Bay, the couple are walking along a nude beach, and the boyfriend notices a black guy with Y on his p. He asks the man if he also has a girlfriend named Wendy. The black guy laughs and says, Nah, man, mine says, Welcome to Jamaica, have a nice day. A cowboy walks into a bar and says, Gentlemen, do you want to see a trick? We do, they reply. A free glass of whiskey, he says. They gave him a glass of whiskey. He drank it. He tossed the glass up, pulled out his gun, aimed at the glass, and shouted, Freezer! The glass hung in the air. Then the cowboy whistled, and the glass fell. An old man emerged from the crowd. Barkeep, my pet doesn't work. Help me out. The cowboy aimed his gun at the old man and shouted, Freeze! The old man was shocked. It really works. Suddenly, the old man pulled out two revolvers and shouted, Anyone whistles, I'll shoot. A couple is sitting in a bar. 
She says, Listen, I know a cool cocktail. Want to try it? He agrees, and she orders a shot of Bailey's and a shot of lemon juice. Kneel down, look me straight in the eyes, pour Bailey's into your mouth, and immediately chase it with the juice. The guy kneels down, looks up, and does as she said. 0 0.3 seconds, a pleasant warm feeling in his mouth. 0 0.6 seconds, the cream in Bailey's curdles. 0 0.9 seconds. His face turns green like an unripe lemon, and he struggles to swallow all of that. 1.2 seconds. His stomach starts to react, wanting to return the cocktail. 3.0 seconds, she whispers in his ear. The cocktail is called Revenge for a B A man returns home earlier than usual. His wife has a lover. She rushes to meet her husband with a trash can. Darling, before you undress, please take out the trash. While the husband is taking out the trash, the lover runs up the stairs to the upper floor and then leaves unnoticed. He thinks to himself, what a clever girl. He comes home, and his wife greets him with a trash can. Darling, before you undress, please take out the trash. The husband takes out the trash and thinks, what a fool. She's been at home all day and still couldn't take out the trash. A guy goes to a neurologist. Doctor, I have a serious problem, but you must promise not to laugh. Doc, oh, come on, that would be completely unprofessional. I've been urologist for 20 years, and this has never happened to me. The guy took off his pants, then his underwear, and the doctor, seeing his microscopic member, burst into hysterical laughter. After about five minutes, he apologized to the guy and said, This won't happen again, so what's your problem? The guy glared at him and said, It's swollen! An elderly man and woman meet in a bar and get to talking. They are enjoying their conversation so much that, when the bar closes, they decide to continue at the woman's apartment. After a time, things start getting pretty romantic and they wind up in bed. Afterward, they're both laying there, staring at the ceiling. The old man is thinking, Gosh! If I had known she was a virgin, I would have been more careful with her. The old lady is thinking, Geez, if I had known he could get it up, I would have taken off my panties. A pregnant woman is about to give birth. The doctor has her on the delivery table, legs up in the stirrups. Suddenly, he sees the top of a head push through. Then the baby pops its head out and says to the doctor, Are you my dad? The doctor says, no, I am your doctor. With that, the baby pops right back inside. Damn, says the doctor. A short while later, he sees the head push through again. Are you my dad? asks the baby. No, I am your doctor, he replies. Once again, the baby vanishes back into his mother's womb. The doctor turns to a nurse and says, Nurse, get that baby's father in here right away we may have a situation on our hands. Moments later, the baby's father is in the delivery room, and the baby's head once again pops out. Are you my dad? The baby asks of the father. The father replies, Yes, little baby, I am your father. The baby then reaches up and begins poking his father in the forehead with his index finger. How do you like that? One day, there were two boys playing by a stream. One of the young boys saw a bush and went over to it. The other boy couldn't figure out why his friend was at the bush for so long. The other boy went over to the bush and looked. The two boys were looking at a woman bathing naked in the stream. All of a sudden, the second boy took off running. The first boy couldn't understand why he ran away so he took off after his friend. Finally, he caught up to him and asked why he ran away. The boy said to his friend, My mom told me if I ever saw a naked lady, I would turn to stone, and I felt something getting hard, so I ran. A couple wants a divorce, but first they must decide who will be the main guardian of their child. The jury asks both the man and woman for a reason why they should be the one to keep the child. 
So the jury asks the woman first. She says, Well, I carried this child around in my stomach for nine months, and I had to go through a painful birth process. This is my child and a part of me. The jury is impressed and then turns to ask the man the same question. The man replies, Okay, I take a coin and put it in the drink machine, and a drink comes out. Now tell me, who does the drink belong to me or the machine? An older couple, who were both widowed, had been going out with each other for a long time. Urged on by their friends, they decided it was finally time to get married. Before the wedding, they went out to dinner and had a long conversation regarding how their marriage might work. They discussed finances, living arrangements, and so on. Finally, the old gentleman decided it was time to broach the subject of their physical relationship. How do you feel about eth? He asked, rather tentatively. I would like it infrequently, she replied. The old gentleman sat quietly for a moment, adjusted his glasses, then leaned over towards her and whispered, Is that one word or two? An old man goes into the social security office and fills out an application. Too old to have a birth certificate, he's asked to prove he is old enough. He opens his shirt and shows them the grey hair on his chest, and they accept that as proof. He goes home to his wife, shows her the check, and explains to her what has happened. She replies, Well, get back down there, pull down your pants, and see if you can get disability. A man, his wife, and a good-looking stranger are stranded on a desert island. The wife quickly loses interest in her husband and begins flirting with the good-looking stranger. The three start to build a watchtower. The stranger offers to take first watch. While the husband and wife gather driftwood on the sand, the stranger yells, Hey! No on the beach! Get back to work! The husband yells back, We're not having Later, the stranger yells out to them again. Again, the husband yells back and corrects him. This happens several times during the stranger's shift. Finally, the husband takes his shift in the watchtower. His wife and the good-looking stranger make passionate love on the beach. The husband on watch exclaims, Wow, it really does look like f from up here. A guy walks into a bar and says to the barman, Give me six double vodkas. The barman says, Wow. You must have had one hell of a day. Yeah, I just found out my oldest son is gay. The next day, the same guy comes into the bar and asks for six more double vodkas. When the bartender asks what's wrong, the man says, I just found out that my youngest son is gay too. On the third day, the guy comes into the bar and orders another six double vodkas. The bartender says, Jesus! Doesn't anybody in your family like women? The man downs the first drink and shakes his head. Yeah, my wife. A doctor from the inner city was conversing with an old friend from med school at a cafe when he said, Man, can I tell you something? His friend nods. Sure. Okay, so the other day I had this one really hot foreign patient, and I haven't been able to stop thinking about her since... He goes on to tell his friend everything about her, from her long blonde hair and ability to speak fluent French, to her shimmering blue eyes and soft skin. His friend seemed more disgusted with each passing moment. Dude, that is not cool. The doctor, indignant, defended himself. What's wrong with that? Lots of doctors are attracted to their patients. His friend simply shook his head and replied, Maybe, but I guarantee you none of those doctors were pediatricians. The elderly Italian man went to his parish priest and asked if the priest would hear his confession. Of course, my son, said the priest. Well, father, at the beginning of World War II, a beautiful woman knocked on my door and asked me to hide her from the Germans. I hid her in my attic and they never found her. That's a wonderful thing, my son, and nothing that you need to confess, said the priest. It's worse, father. I was weak, 
and told her that she had to pay for rent of the attic with her favors, continued the old man. Well, it was a very difficult time, and you took a large risk. You would have suffered terribly at their hands if the Germans had found you hiding her. I know that God, in his wisdom and mercy, will balance the good and the evil and judge you kindly, said the priest. Thanks, Father, said the old man. That's a load off of my mind. Can I ask another question? Of course, my son, said the priest. The old man asked, Do I need to tell her that the war is over? A man lost his... He went to a village healer who said, I'll give you a gnome. When you find work for him, you'll be able to get it up. The man came home, sent the gnome to the garden to dig, and went to his wife. But as soon as they started, he couldn't get it up again. He went out to the garden and saw that everything had been dug up and the gnome was resting. The man sent him to build a garage, went to his wife, and again, he couldn't get it up. He went out and saw that the garage was ready. The man decided to consult his wife. The wife said something to the gnome, the gnome ran off, and the man got an arrested for an hour, two hours, a whole day. The man was surprised and asked his wife, what kind of work did you give him? She replied, go to the attic, you'll see for yourself. The man went to the attic and there was the gnome washing his wife's underwear, scrubbing and scrubbing, then taking them out of the water, sniffing them and complaining, but they still stink, they stink. <laughs> yeah. A man walks into a asks about the prices. The madam replies, the cost is $200. The client is somewhat taken aback. Really, isn't that a bit steep? The madam adds, we record the entire process on video. At the end of your visit, you receive a videotape. The client agrees and gets down to business. He puts in a lot of effort, and when he finishes, he decides to watch the recording right away. However, the video player in the is broken and can only play the recording in reverse. The client watches all his efforts from end to beginning. After the viewing, the madam asks, And what did you like the most? After a pause, he replies, To be completely honest, what I liked the most was watching you give me my money back. Husband finds out that his wife is cheating on him. One day, he comes home and tells his wife that he's going on a business trip. He hides on the balcony. The wife leaves the apartment with her lover, and the husband sneaks into the apartment and hides behind the wardrobe. They come back, have some drinks and snacks, and he sleeps with her. She says to him, Darling, make me laugh so hard that I wet myself. The lover starts running around the apartment naked, jumping on the bed, then on the table, then on the wardrobe, and suddenly jumps out of the window. She shouts to him, Darling, where are you going? I've already wet myself. He replies, Look behind the wardrobe. That's where you'll really sh yourself. There are three friends. Shut the hell up, your manners, and bear sh One day they're in the woods and bear sh gets lost and your manners looks for him. Shut the hell up goes to the police station. My friend is missing. Can you help me? The officer says, What's your name? Shut the hell up. What? Shut the hell up. Say that again. Shut the hell up. Son, where's your manners? That's what I've been trying to tell you. He's out in the woods looking for bear sh Three men were talking. The first one said, Imagine, I went to a store with my girlfriend and she saw such s It cost me $30. The second one said, Well, I went to a store with my wife, and she saw panties with diamonds. It cost me a pile of money. The third one said, My wife saw some panties, just ordinary ones, nothing special. It cost me $3,000 and a divorce. The first and second guys asked, In which store did she find them? The third guy replied, In which store? Under our bed. 
a man and his wife go to their honeymoon hotel for their 25th anniversary. As the couple reflected on that magical evening 25 years ago, the wife asked the husband, When you first saw my naked body in front of you, what was going through your mind? The husband replied, All I wanted to do was to f***ing out and suck your Then, as the wife undressed, she asked, What are you thinking now? He replied, It looks as if I did a pretty good job. Two girls and a boy are playing doctors and nurses behind the shed one day. The little boy suddenly drops his pants and shows them his... One girl screams and runs away. The other rolls her eyes and proudly scoffs, Pfft, that's nothing. My daddy's got two of those. What? says the boy. Two. Yeah, two, replies the girl. One for going pee-pee and another for cleaning the nanny's teeth. A husband returns from a business trip. As he enters the building, someone tells him that his wife brought a lover to their apartment today. He rushes to the apartment, opens the door, looks around. No one's there. His wife is lying naked in bed, claiming that nobody was there. He sees the window open, looks out, and spots a nearly naked man in underwear running away. He couldn't stand it, so he grabbed a bedside table and threw it at the man. In court. The defendant. So, I'm returning from a business trip. Someone tells me my wife's lover is in my apartment. I run to the apartment. I see the open window and I see the lover running away. So, I threw the bedside table at him. The victim. I usually go for a run around the house. And I run only in my underwear. It's more comfortable for me. So I'm running, and suddenly something falls on me. I wake up in the hospital. The witness. Well, I was sitting inside the bedside table. Three girlfriends are chatting. The first one says, Can you believe it? When I perform oral on my boyfriend John, his testicles are always cold. The second one replies, Not a big deal. My boyfriend Nick's also cold during that. The third girl stays quiet. The others ask her, So, are your boyfriend Mike's more cold during or all? She replies, Oh, I don't know. I've never done that with him. You must be crazy. Do you want him to cheat on you? The next day, the girlfriends meet again, and the third girl has a black eye. Her friends ask, What happened to you? She explains, Well, I listened to you girls yesterday and decided to perform oral on Mike. After that, I told him, You're warm, not like Nick's and John's. And then Mike punched me in the eye. A 70-year-old man goes for a medical checkup. The doctor says, You're in great shape for your age. How old was your father when he passed away? Who told you he's dead? He's 92 years old and feels great. Amazing! And at what age did your grandfather pass away? Who told you he's dead? He's 115 years old and is getting married next week. Unbelievable! Why on earth would he want to get married at 115 years old? Who told you he wants to? He got a girl pregnant. On the bus today, I was sitting next to this really beautiful girl, and I kept thinking, Please don't get a Please don't get an a But she did. A s is giving a lecture. During intercourse, body temperature rises by one degree. He notices a sleeping student, wakes him up and says, Repeat what I just said. The student, still half asleep, looks around, and then his friend shows him by pointing between two fingers, then one finger. During course, body temperature rises by one degree. All right, and he goes back to reading. In birds, during intercourse, body temperature rises by two degrees. Suddenly, he sees the student sleeping again, so he goes to him and says, repeat. The student looks around again, and his friend shows him by pointing between two fingers, then two fingers, and then flapping his arms like wings. 
the student scratches his head and says, to raise body temperature by two degrees during you have to see that feathers fly. It's 11 p.m. The husband isn't home yet, and the wife is waiting in the kitchen with a rolling pin. The doorbell rings. The wife opens the door. Her husband is standing there. A bouquet of red roses in one hand, a cake in the other, and a gentle smile on his face. Good evening, dear. This is for you. Oh, darling, is it some kind of holiday today? Our wedding anniversary? No, just because... Let's go to the bedroom, shall we? Wait, at least have dinner first. No, no, let's go. Well, at least have some tea with the cake. No, let's go quickly. Ah, well, heavy sigh. You see, I can't tonight. Did all of you conspire against me or something? A woman complains to her friend. My husband is absolutely impossible. He only talks about his mother all the time. Mom doesn't do it like that. If mom could see this, mom wouldn't like this. I'm just in the 10th place for him. Her friend suggests, you need him to see you as a woman, then he'll forget about his mother. When he comes home in the evening, greet him in some see outfit. In short, the husband comes home in the evening and his wife greets him in a black bra, black stockings, with black gloves on her hands. He exclaims, God, you're all in black. Did something happen to mom? Three guys survive a plane crash in the desert. They wander for days, starving and thirsty. They finally come across a lone house and knock on the door, desperate for help. A crusty old lady answers and says she'd be happy to help if one of them will agree to satisfy her first. After a quick discussion, one of the guys decides to take one for the team. He walks into her bedroom while the other two wait outside the house. He tells her to close her eyes and open her legs. He quickly runs to the kitchen and grabs the first thing he can find, an ear of corn. He shoves it in her and throws it out the window, grabs another, rams it in, and throws it out the window. She is finally satisfied and agrees to cook for them. He goes outside to get his friends, and they exclaim, We're actually not hungry anymore. We just ate some delicious buttery corn on the cob. Here is a conversation between friends. One of them said, Try this when your husband comes home. Wear a short robe. Don't wear panties. Open the door for your husband. Turn your back to him and bend over, pretending to do something. He'll see, get interested, and everything will be fine. The wife washed up, combed her hair, put on a short silk robe, took off her panties, and waited. The doorbell rang. She looked through the peephole. It was her husband. She unlocked the door, bent over, heard the door open from behind, and someone fell with a thud. She turned around to see her husband had fainted. She dragged him into the apartment by his leg, slapped his face, and he came to his senses and said, Honey, you won't believe it. I walked into the apartment, and there was a gnome in front of me. Its cheeks were huge, its beard was long, drool was dripping from its mouth, and it was wearing your slippers. A crowd gathered around a phone booth with frosted glass. Everyone wants to make a call, but someone is inside the booth. Sighs, moans, and groans can be heard. They called the policeman. They opened the booth and found a two-meter tall woman and a short man with a bucket in his hand. The policeman asks, What were you doing in the phone booth? We were making a call, of course. But all these people claim they heard your moans and sighs. Surely you were having... Oh, come on, officer. She's so tall, I can't even reach her. Can't reach, you say? Well, stand behind the woman with the bucket and stand on it. Oh, darn, still can't reach. Now stand in front of her. Still can't reach. You see, folks, you were mistaken. They couldn't have been having... The man is too short. I'm sorry, you're free to go.
the man and the woman left. But after a while, the policeman catches up with them, takes the short man aside and asks, Listen, you have to explain how you managed to have... I saw for myself that you couldn't reach the bucket. It's very simple. You don't need to stand on the bucket at all. You put it on her head, grab the handle and pull yourself up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Man planned trip on ship with wife for month. He went to the pharmacy and bought a bottle of seasick pills and a tube of lubricant. Upon returning home, his wife said, I've been thinking there's no reason we can't go for a month. Mr. Johnson went back to the pharmacy and asked for 12 bottles of seasick pills and a tube of lubricant. When he returned, his wife said, Since the children are on their own, what's stopping us from cruising the world? He went back and bought 200 bottles of seasick pills and more tubes of lubricant. The pharmacist finally had to ask, You know, Mr. Johnson, I don't mean to pry, but if it makes you that sick, why the hell do you do it? Two single friends meet and share their impressions of life. One says, I've adapted quite well. I invite a man over, he brings champagne, flowers, candies, and so on. We have a great evening. I have a button under my bed connected to the doorbell. And as soon as we get into bed, I press it. The doorbell rings, and I scream in fright. My husband's home! The guy grabs his clothes and jumps out the window. The friends laugh and part ways. They meet again six months later. The second one says, I decided to do as you do. As soon as we lay down, I pressed the button and screamed, My husband's home! And the guy, bam, got paralyzed. He's been lying for half a year. Yesterday he said his first three words. What were they? Where's the husband? At a gas station, there's a poster. Whoever buys a full tank of gas gets to participate in a lottery. The prize, free s Two men pull up, fill up their tank, and go to pay. They also ask if they can try their luck. The owner explains that the rules are very simple. He thinks of a number from 1 to 10. Whoever guesses it wins. The man. 7. No, I thought of the number 2. Try again another time. Two weeks later, the same situation. The man. Three. Unfortunately, I thought of five. Maybe you'll be lucky next time. The men leave the gas station, and one says, It's a suspicious kind of lottery. Maybe he's just a crook? The second one, excitedly. No way. My wife won twice last week. Monica is at the dentist. Half of her mouth is numb due to anesthesia, and the dentist is working intensely. Monica's cell phone starts ringing. Ignoring it four times, the dentist finally answers the phone, annoyed. What's up? A man asks. What's up? Dentist. Who are you? I'm Monica's husband. Dentist. Listen, man. I'm about to finish. She will spit it out and call you back. Two ladies are playing golf. One hits the ball and with horror sees it hit one of the men in the nearby group. The man grabs his groin, falls, and starts rolling on the ground with a groan. The lady runs up to him and says, I'm so sorry, it was an accident. The man replies, It's okay, it will pass in a moment. The lady insists, Let me help you. The man responds, It's okay, everything's fine, oh who? The lady, who is a doctor, puts the man on his back, unzips his pants, puts her hand inside, and starts massaging. She asks, Feeling better? The man replies, Oh, it feels really great, but my big toe still hurts like hell. A case in a two-story cottage is being heard. A painter, who was painting the house exterior, gives his testimony. I was standing on the ladder, painting the wall near the second floor window. From above, I noticed how this guy broke in through the door, and then I saw everything through the window. And what did you see? 
He rushed into the room and pushed the girl onto the bed. Okay, and then? He ripped off her skirt and blouse. And then? He took off her bra and panties. And then? He lay on top of her. And then? After that, I didn't see anything because the ladder broke and I fell down. Why did it break? Because there were already nine people on it. A husband and wife bought a comic book. They look at the pictures and everyone is in threesomes. The wife says to her husband, you should go and invite your friend. He's a close person to us. The husband thinks, he's a close friend. I should invite him. The husband goes to his friend and says, Friend, we need your help. We bought the Ctra, and there are all threesomes, and you're a close friend. Come tonight. The friend thinks, All right, I'll come after I milk the cow. The friend comes over. They drink, get undressed, turn off the lights, get into bed, and the love triangle orgy begins. Time passes. The friend suddenly turns on the light and starts getting dressed. The wife and husband ask, Friend, where are you going? Where? Where? We're on the 41st position, and I'm still sucking A man rushes into a departing train and says to the conductor, I didn't have time to buy a ticket. Here's a hundred dollars. Please find me a spot next to someone. The conductor placed him in a compartment with a woman. Half an hour later, the woman comes out crying and sobbing and says to the conductor, When you put a man in my compartment, I didn't say anything. When he started to fart, I kept quiet too. When he began to undress, I remained silent. When he started to undress me, I still didn't say anything. But when he took off my glasses, put them on his private part and said, Johnny, look at the crocodile we're going to sleep with. I couldn't take it anymore. A man and his wife hadn't had for a year. The wife calls her friend and says, My husband hasn't made love to me for a year. What should I do? Her friend advises, Don't panic. Use this Chinese folk remedy. You soak these herbs, then he wears them on his feet. And when he comes home from work in the evening and steps in, he'll want to make love. The wife follows the advice, but when her husband comes home, his eyes are completely white. The wife, trying to be seductive, asks, What's wrong, darling? The man doesn't respond to his wife's question, pushes her away, and starts panicking, running around the apartment, opening every drawer, and then running to the kitchen and opening the fridge. He takes out as many cucumbers as he can carry and starts stuffing them into his behind, in panic, the wife calls her friend and says, What have you done? My husband is shoving cucumbers up his behind. Her friend responds, Damn, he's wearing them inside out. A French woman is walking through the Boulogne forest. Suddenly, a man jumps out onto the path, grabs her, drags her into the bushes, and has his way with her. After a while, he asks, Listen. When you go home and your husband asks where you've been, what will you tell him? Well, she says, I'll tell him the truth, that I was walking through the Boulogne forest when suddenly a man jumped out, grabbed me, dragged me into the bushes and did it twice. Twice? It was only once. What, are you in a hurry? A woman announces to her friend that she is getting married for the fourth time. How wonderful! but I hope you don't mind me asking what happened to your first husband. He ate poisonous mushrooms and died. Oh, how tragic. What about your second husband? He ate poisonous mushrooms too and died. Oh, how terrible. I'm almost afraid to ask you about your third husband. He died of a broken neck. A broken neck? He wouldn't eat the mushrooms. A sophisticated family. Their 17-year-old daughter is pregnant. Everyone is shocked. The mother is drinking Valacordon and wiping her tears with a lace handkerchief. The father is gloomily drinking 20-year-old Martel. They are all waiting for the culprit. A red Ferrari stops at the entrance. A dignified man in a Brioni suit and red hippo shoes gets out. 
he goes up to the apartment, stopping all the O's and R's of the parents, and says, So, I am a very famous person. I have a family. I can't leave them. However, I won't abandon your daughter either. I've decided this. If your daughter gives birth to a boy, he will inherit two of my factories, $20 million, education at Harvard, and your daughter will receive a lifetime allowance of $2 million per year. If she gives birth to a girl, she will inherit my factory, $10 million, education at Oxford, and your daughter will receive a lifetime allowance of $1 million. But if she has a miscarriage... The father gets up, puts his glass on the table, approaches the man, places his hand on his shoulder and says, Then you'll f*** daughter again. A couple driving home hit and injured a skunk on the road. The wife gets out and brings it back to the car. We need to take it to a vet. It's shivering. It must be cold. What should I do? She asks. The husband replies, Put it between your legs to keep it warm. But it stinks, she exclaims. So hold its nose. Two gay men are riding on a tram. It's rush hour. It's crowded. One says to the other, Honey, let's do it right here. What are you talking about, my sweet? There are so many people here. Oh, you're worrying for nothing. No one here cares. No one will even notice. Well, I don't know. Look at this, loudly. Excuse me, what time is it? No one even turns around. Do you see now? Come on, take off your pants quickly. At the final stop, an old man sits alone on the tram. The conductor approaches him. Grandpa, why are you still sitting? Oh dear, my heart's acting up. I can barely breathe. Well, you should have asked the passengers for some heart medicine. Someone would have had some. Yeah. Ask here. One guy asked what time it was, and they him in the air. Rest of the ride. Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson went on a camping trip. In the evening, they set up the tent and lay down to sleep. In the middle of the night, Holmes wakes up his companion and says, Watson, look at these stars and tell me what conclusion logic leads you to. Watson looks at the sky and replies, Holmes, I see millions of stars. If even just a few of them have planets, then inevitably there will be several planets in the universe similar to Earth, and perhaps there is life on them. What conclusions do you come to? Holmes responds, Watson, I see that while we were sleeping, someone stole our tent. A girl comes to a gynecological consultation. She walks into the corridor sees people in white coats. She approaches them. Please help me. I have a problem. Tell us. Well, you see, no matter how much I have a I've never had an Oh, this problem needs to be investigated. Undress. The girl undresses. They try her in various positions. Well, how is it? It still doesn't work in any position. We have a specialist here, John. He has a 33 centimeter tool. Even, come here. Even comes over, tries in various ways too. Well, how is it? It still doesn't work for me. Well then, this is not for us. This is for a doctor. And who are you? We are painters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.